President Assad was not behind a chemical weapon attack last month. The rebels carried it out as a provocation. Well, that's what a letter sent to Barack Obama from former U.S. intelligence and military officials says, citing their own security sources. It was signed by 12 ex-officials. Former U.S. Army judge advocate Todd Pierce is one of them and joins me live right now. Now, your letter alleges that this chemical attack was carried out by the Syrian opposition, and you warn against the U.S. taking military action. Now, Bush ignored similar advice you gave him prior to the Iraq war. Do you think you're being listened to now, bearing in mind the fact that any military action seems to be stalling? Well, I think it's so self-evident that uh, this is going to be disastrous to uh, launch a military attack that I don't know that anyone needs to listen to us. I think it's readily apparent to so many other people. Uh, the British Parliament saw that, uh, and we may be being offered a face-saving means to extricate ourselves from what we put, the corner we put ourselves into with the latest uh, offer, you know, of the Russians to uh, help bring about a meeting and, and getting these chemical weapons uh, in, under the control of international authorities. Uh, I, I don't know that our statement really said that we know exactly what happened, but rather calling into question the supposed intelligence that's claiming that Assad was behind all this. But you I do have other really intelligence, don't you? Is that you? You are suggesting in the letter that there is intelligence saying that it was indeed not the Assad government. But why should your intelligence or your sources be more credible than Obama's? Well, there's a... Uh, well, Again, if you look at what Obama, President Obama has been saying, uh, even they uh, seem to waffle a little bit on how irrefutable this evidence is. And the rush to war, I mean, but for the British Parliament, I think we probably would have been in war, at war a week ago, you know, Saturday, when the UN inspectors had left Syria. Um, obviously, the British Parliament slowed us down, slowed this process down. Uh, but. There's reports out there, and, and people that I uh, am associated with, uh, you know, share information, not classified, but just readily available open source information, that you know this may have been an accident by the uh, you know Free Syrian Army, uh, as as one matter of uh, conjecture, and supposedly there are some people within that group who have admitted that. Uh, so again, I don't think the intelligence is clear, and to go launch a war on the pretext of humanitarianism that's going to result in far more casualties than the alleged 1,400, and I don't know that that's even well established, uh, I think that can well be considered a uh, act of aggression, a uh, crime of aggression, as it's phrased. Uh, why why, why would it be a realistic option? Why, why would evidence. it be a realistic, op realistic option to suggest that the rebels would carry out such an attack? What, what would they achieve by doing so? Well, I think there's so many. First of all, again, again, some information indicates it might have been just plain accident. Uh, allegedly, a rebel claims that they weren't well trained and these chemicals were provided by Saudi Arabia. So again, that would be one possibility. Uh, otherwise, there's so many factions in the Syrian conflict that we don't know without good intelligence, and I mean genuinely good intelligence, not mere conjecture, uh, maybe one faction saw this as an opportunity. We did have the red line, the so-called red line, and so we announced to the world that if this happens, the United States, with all of its military power, is going to intervene on the side of the rebels. So certainly there is a motive and perhaps an opportunity for a faction to exploit that opportunity. And just briefly, you warned of retaliation, retaliatory attacks if the U.S. would go ahead with military action. What, what, what sort of threats are you, are you talking about there? Well, Chalmers Johnson wrote a book, a fantastic book, Blowback, way back in 1998 or so, uh, talking about the threat that, you know, unlimited intervention in other nations' affairs might trigger blowback, retaliation. And in fact, uh, you know, as a Guantanamo defense attorney, uh, I represented a couple clients, and uh, one of whom had created a video pointing out that uh, attacks by Al Qaeda were, in fact, retaliation for what they saw as uh, hostile acts by the United States toward people in the Middle East. I think it's uh, incredible to believe that other people would not consider retaliation against the United States when the United States has made no secret that it will consider retaliation. So I. I think it's pretty self-evident that there'd be some sort of a retaliation once we enter that civil war on the side, on one side.
uh, and, and maybe on one side of one faction. So, uh, you know, other factions may too come, you know, uh, attempt to retaliate against us. It's, it's a witch's brew that we're trying to get ourselves into. And, you know, we used to recognize in the Army that war was so unpredictable and expensive, you tried to avoid it. And it seems like uh, with Dick okay. Cheney back in 2001, we flipped that on his head. Todd Pierce, thank you very much to indeed for your thoughts. the first choice. Well, well, thank you very much indeed for your thoughts on this. Great to have you live here on RT. Former U.S. Army Judge Advocate joining us live here. Thank you very much.